I did finish reading Homestuck again as an adult, and I wanted to give a few thoughts on it. I uploaded a short a few weeks ago saying that the story doesn't have much of a clear message that the author is trying to get across. I still think that's true. It's a story by someone sitting at home with not enough to do for people who are sitting at home with not enough to do. Home stuck. That's the audience, and we're sticking to it. But what I think is the lack of an intentional message doesn't mean that there's nothing at all we can get out of it, and I do have some thoughts I want to share on it. It just took me a little bit to formulate those thoughts. These notes are going to seem a little bit scattered, but a big theme in the story is teamwork. How the game itself forces the players to rely on each other heavily. And the game itself even punishes people for attempting to play single player, or even attempting to play with not enough players, or without players of the right aspect. And even in unexpected ways, the nature of the game, taking players right in that adolescent age range where social connections matter that much more because they're at that critical age. I also appreciate how, by nature of the story having taken years to write, the story itself and the characters have been maturing with the reader, and even the author has been maturing with the readers. That's a really nice part about a story that comes out in series over a very long period of time like this. I mentioned already in a few other videos on this channel, the contrast between the the easiest way to put it is the contrast between Miyazaki's view of how the conflict should play out in any given story, and Tolkien's view of how the conflict should play out. Miyazaki is on record saying that painting any character as completely 100% evil is not a good thing to do, and he dislikes Tolkien's work because Tolkien does have a very clear good and evil side. But the stories Miyazaki writes are more similar to the ones that George R. Martin writes, where the characters and their motivations are laid out clearly, and even characters that are pretty hard to like, it's almost always possible to think about and see why they do the things they do, and even relate to it at least a little bit. Homestuck by that measure leans more towards the Tolkien style of writing. There is a good, there is an evil, the villains are clearly villains, they clearly want things that are not good for anyone else by almost any measure, and defeating those villains in whatever way they can be defeated is seen and portrayed as a universal good. Now I will say reading Homestuck again, it was a very gripping story. I, it kept me glued to my seat wanting to read more. And even after I finished, I kept thinking back on it, wanting to go back and think about this part or that part of the story again. And one of the reasons for that could be how strongly appealing this good versus evil style of writing a conflict in a story is. I wanted to touch on something that I don't know if the author intended to put this in there as clearly as he did. That's the theme of determination being a very powerful thing, powerful enough enough to win victories even when you think there's no possible way to win. And there's a lot of examples of this with a lot of characters' personal stories. The most obvious one I think is Calibor, and it's easy to see. He tried playing the game in single-player mode, and as punishment for that, he was given the hardest, the most menial path towards progression in the game that anyone can possibly get. But through sheer determination, sheer force of will, he slugged through it all, and he actually got a result out of it that he would consider a victory. Another example, Rose not accepting that her session is unwinnable. One of the most memorable Rose moments, at least for me, was on page 2682 when she says, we will snatch meaning from the jaws of futility. If you Google that phrase, you can get to that page and that conversation she has. Another example, Mina's determination in putting together the whole ghost army. And another example, Mina again refusing to accept that everyone in her original session was destined to be wiped out of history completely. No, instead of accepting that, she found a way to, at least in theory, keep on existing in some form. She killed everyone with a bomb. And instead of just stopping existence completely, they got to live on as ghosts in the furthest ring. So at least in some way, they still got to influence events at least indirectly. Another example of Riska, her determination in looking for the artifact in the furthest ring. And another example, Doc Scratch. How long has he been doing his work in the Alternia universe in order to set everything up for the perfect conclusion? There's probably a lot more examples of determination being a really powerful tool for probably more than half the characters in the entire Homestuck story. You can try to think of more of those on your own. One of my favorite moments from this entire series, this entire story, was the heart-to-heart 
part that Dave and Dirk have, pardon the pun, in the conversation where it was shortly after they meet each other finally, and they were talking about each other's upbringings. And Dirk is not at all surprised that some version of himself is capable of doing horrible things. He owns it and he apologizes for it, even though it was not that same iteration of him that did those horrible things. I relate to that because I know that I'm also capable of doing some pretty bad things. I don't want to, I don't intend to, but I know that under the right circumstances it's not out of the question, or at least would not have been out of the question, for me to be completely irresponsible in some way, or at least malevolent in some way. The famous line from Solzhenitsyn, the line between good and evil runs through the heart of every man. Anyone who doesn't think that they're capable of doing something horrible is fooling themselves. One last note on this, the role of music in this story. Homestuck has a lot, a lot of good music that was written specifically for this story. A lot of it is 8-bit, but that doesn't mean it's not good, that doesn't mean it's not catchy. And most importantly, the reader comes to associate each tune with a certain part of the story. So if I want to save some of these tunes, listen to them later. Whenever it comes around on my playlist, I remember, oh yeah, that's when this happened, that's when that happened. So through that music, the reader is able to keep the story in their head for longer. Overall, it's very talented writing. I enjoyed a lot of the humor. I admire the sheer dedication and note-taking that must have been required to keep track of all of the time loops in the story. I'm not quite sure I could juggle that many balls myself. So uh, honestly, yeah, props. Good job, Andrew Hussey.